Episode 149 of the podcast, Working with Dogs is Really Hard Work. How can our worries and frustrations or anger affect the dog on our table? And what can we do about it? Find out this week. You're listening to the Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast. I'm Chrissy Newmeyer-Smith. I'm a certified professional groomer, a certified behavior consultant for canines, a certified professional dog trainer, and the owner of Happy Critters in Nashua, New Hampshire. And this, my friends and colleagues, is the podcast where grooming and training meet. For those who don't work with dogs, you might not realize that working with dogs is really hard work. And so many of us find ourselves getting a little bit stressed during the day. Sometimes it's compassion fatigue. Sometimes it's looking at the schedule and wondering how we're going to get it all done. But I want you to think about, as groomers, we've all seen dogs coming in for grooming in really rough shape. This is a common one. And that could be excessive matting. It could be neglect related to health problems buried underneath all those mats and dirty coat. It could be that an older dog is really struggling and having a hard time. Whatever it is, we as pet lovers have an emotional response. And that could be sadness. That could be frustration. That could be anger. That could be worry. Is this little dog going to be able to handle whatever it is we need to do today? Is this a dog that maybe can't handle anything today? So we need to think about some of these emotions that we have. How does this relate to dog behavior? Well, (laughs) don't worry, I'm getting there. Uh, Our behavior and our moods and our body language affects the dogs that we work with. So if we're having trouble coping with something, like say a dog being in rough condition, we sometimes forget that we're trying to help this dog have the best experience they can have. And I really want us to remember that. And it can be hard. But I wish I could say that I've always kept the dog's point of view in mind. But truth be told, I have found myself thinking only about the dog's physical condition. And I think that most of us can relate to that aggravated by an owner who's let a puppy get matted. We fall into these traps and we do get aggravated. We're like, oh my God, not another one. Why does this keep happening? And sometimes we forget, we forget. This dog on the table is also having an emotional response to the things that we're doing. Now, There's some debate about whether or not we should be discussing emotions in dogs, (laughs) but let's think about it from their point of view. They're having a rough time too. They can be having a hard time because of the kind of condition that they're in. I have found myself focused on all of the other stuff, but not always focused on helping this dog have the best experience that I can provide. To really focus in on the dog as my customer when they are on my table. Because the dog's well-being is the most important part. The dog's well-being is the most important part. And that includes their physical body, but it also includes whatever emotions they might be going through. Whatever stresses, fears, frustrations they might have. So I want to help the dogs be calm, comfortable, and cooperative. And I want this to be low-stress experience. Even if, let's say, their coat condition is um, really dreadful. (laughs) Even if we're worried about their health level, even if there's something about it that I'm finding stressful or frustrating, heartbreaking or angry. (laughs) So I want you to think about we need to keep the dog's experience in mind and that can be hard. Now, I'm going to give you an example here. I have a little dog that I was grooming who passed away this week, but I would say the last... Oh, the last three or four groomings, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm going to see her again. And you can't help but feel sad because you're going to miss this dog, this dog that you've known for a long time. However, think about your emotions and how the dog is responding to us, how the dog feels while we're working with them, because we have an effect on them. So... There are times where maybe you're really sad. Another example, a little old dog that I worked with that last time I groomed her, she had just, her health had declined so much, you know, and we're all just really worried and had every reason to be. She did pass away very soon after that. 
but I have to remember it's up to me to try to have that dog have a stress-free grooming. I want her to be calm, comfortable, and cooperative. I might need to adjust the things that I do. I might need to tell owners that we're not going to worry about beautiful trims, which, I mean, I say that a lot on this podcast, and I know that sometimes that's the tough pill to swallow. (laughs) But this is about helping this dog have an experience that's not going to be stressful. Maybe they're already pretty stressed, and that stresses us out too. Because we love animals. Because we love them. Same thing in the veterinary care. Same thing with pet sitters. Same thing with dog walkers. We all see dogs that sometimes we're just like, oh my gosh, look at the condition this dog is in. And we have an emotional response because we care. Now, I will say, I want you to also think about times when we're trying to take on more than we can. And we're trying to work on too many things all at once or expectations that maybe are we're just a little out of reach (laughs) and the dog that comes in with some challenges maybe we weren't expecting those challenges can really throw our schedule off and sometimes we're stressed and sometimes that's where our frustration is coming from we're stressed out things are taking too long and we're thinking oh my god this isn't even the breed that the woman said it was and we took this dog in but he's a lot more work blah 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 right we've all heard it we've all done it we've all said it (laughs) So I want you to think about, we have to be able to take a step back from that, from the emotions that we're feeling while we're grooming the dog, focus in on the dog. How can I make this a good experience for this dog? Maybe that's a dog who's really, really old. Maybe that's a dog that's really, really young. Maybe that's a dog that you just uncovered an injury because they've been in a pelted, matted mess for God knows how long. Many of us don't even take those cases anymore because We're so booked solid that the kind of people who are like, we get them groomed once a year, don't ever get an opening with us. But it still happens, and it happens a lot. So if we can remember this dog is our priority, this dog, not just this dog's skin, not just this dog's coat, not just this dog's physical body, but the experience that they have. So calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Remember, cooperative means We are cooperating together. We bring something to cooperative. That's not just the dog. So we need to be thinking about, all right, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you as the dog have a good experience. And I need to adjust my mood. So compassion fatigue is a real thing. And I know that sometimes we as groomers reach a point where we're like, I just can't take it anymore. (laughs) <laughs> I've been a groomer for a long time and I'm gonna say sometimes that was like the deciding factor that like I need to find a different job maybe it's a job that just has unrealistic expectations and is kind of working me to death and I see a lot of groomers complaining about stuff like that but you have to be able to focus in on the dog you got to and it's really hard. It takes some patience, and patience isn't easy. Now, patience always pays off, but it's not easy. Let's get back to what is this dog's name? What is this dog's name? What do we know about this dog? Like, hi, sweetie, can I get you to relax? Can I get some eye contact? Can I get you to loosen up underneath my hand? Can I watch for any subtle signs that you're becoming more stressed? And can I keep my own stress in the background and not project it onto my grooming table. And that can be really difficult, really difficult. So some coping strategies. (laughs) First of all, if you're in a high stress environment all the time and you don't handle that well, you might need to reassess your work environment. Maybe that's not the right environment for you as a professional. Second, If you are experiencing these feelings of frustration and anger all the time, you may be having some compassion fatigue. And compassion fatigue is real. You see it a lot more in the veterinary industry, but I think we as groomers see an awful lot of stuff. We see an awful lot of stuff. And I find a lot of groomers are getting bullied into doing things that are medical that aren't grooming related because we think the owners won't take that dog to the vet and we just need to help this dog and do the thing. But we should not be doing that. Not just my opinion. (laughs) It is my opinion, but it's not just my opinion. We should not be doing anything that borders on medical. 
So if we see a sore, do not shave it all around it and clean that up. That is not our job. If we find infected ears, I know it's sad and it's frustrating. We should not be cleaning those out and plucking them out and making that nice and clean. The veterinarian needs to see that. The veterinarian needs to take a sample and find out what is happening in that ear and provide medical assistance, perhaps a prescription. So we need to remember that while it's frustrating and it's sad, sometimes the best thing we can do is just think about, take a step back, and think about this dog, this one, fluffy, sparky, spot, Bella, you know, like who is this dog in front of us and how are we really helping them and not get our emotions in there. Now, there are times where after you're finished doing a dog or you take a break from that dog and you go out in the other room and you're like, ah, I just can't take it. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. And actually one of the best pieces of advice I got long, long ago was if you are feeling a little bit stressed out, take a break and if there's one of your one of the dogs there that's one of your favorites, reconnect with one of your favorites. Take a dog out for a quick pee or something, maybe some a little bit of petting and some little bit of playing, but to remind yourself why you do it. Why you do it, which is because we love the dogs. So compassion fatigue is part of working with animals. We see an awful lot of stuff that can be quite sad, but we can't let that affect how we interact with the animals on our table. If you're enjoying this podcast, please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes and tell all of your friends. What does our body language do when we are angry or frustrated? What does it, what does it spell out? We stiffen up. Let's say you're at the dentist and you're, you have a hygienist who's working there who's now picking at your mouth don't know about you, but I think for a lot of dogs, they, they kind of see us as like going to the dentist. They're never going to enjoy it. Sorry, I don't enjoy going to my dentist, but I like them as people and I trust them and I'm willing to go. I just never, ever crave it. And I think that dogs, we can kind of parallel with that. Anyway, so imagine you're at the dentist and the person who is picking in your mouth is really frustrated. Ooh, what kind of body language are they giving you? Are you feeling really confident in their taking care of you? Let's say they're really frustrated because you were supposed to be in, blah, 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 and now you're late and blah, 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 and, and really frustrated with you. That would not be somebody that we'd want to go back to. But our dogs don't have a choice on who they go back to. Their owner's are making that choice. Now let's say that same hygienist is having a bad day, kind of comes in and says, you know what, Oof having such a stressful day. Let me just shake this off for a minute, you know, and uh, hey, hi, how are you? The tone has changed because now they've reconnected with the job and the person and what's going on with you and let go of whatever scheduling conflicts or office stuff or anything outside of the connection between the two of you. So, the parallel to that is when I'm grooming, there's a connection between me and this dog. There's a connection. We have to be connected. We're at the same table. Now, sometimes groomers will refer to that as energy. And okay, I'm going to say I'm totally buy into energy. However, I find for a lot of people that is way too abstract. They're never going to buy into this idea that we share energy or project energy. Uh, so the way we word that for people who do not ever, ever choose to buy into this idea of energy is that we set the mood. We're part of setting the tone of that interaction. So it, I find that even the most Vulcan of our, <laughs> of our groomers can handle the idea that like, oh, I set the mood. I set the tone. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to bring frustration to that interaction. I'm going to take a couple slow, deep breaths help myself get into a better mood and be different when I get there because we stiffen, we bristle. We're, we're actually more aggressive with our hand movements. You might not realize that, but when we're frustrated or angry, no matter how smooth we think we are, we're probably not as smooth as we are when we're relaxed. There are physical changes in our body when we get frustrated. So set the mood, set the tone reconnect with that dog. Think about it. Even if this is a 
yet another. Well, they didn't bring him in for six months and now he's totally pelted and they're going to yell at me that I had to shave him because they're already upset about it before they even left, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? If you're not a groomer, you might not realize this stuff happens all the time. People want to blame their groomer for not being able to save coat that is totally matted. And yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> Every, 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 every groomer has had this happen. So, but be thinking about, ah, oh, I just need to let that go. Because that's the owner that we're upset with, not the dog. We're upset with the owner. We might be upset with the owner about the condition this dog is in for a variety of reasons. But if we're stressed, what happens with the dog? The dog is going to get stressed too. If we're frustrated, our body language is hostile, whether we mean it to be or not, even if we're trying to tone it down. So another example of this, if you've ever had a coworker who's having a really, really bad day, you know that, you know, it affects you. Even if they're grooming on the other side of the room, even if they're another tech at, at your veterinary office and they're off on the other side of the room, you see it, you sense it, you know it. And you might not know what it is about their body language that's really getting to you, but it gets to you. It affects everybody. So if we can help recognize that emotion in ourselves or in others, there are times where I've worked in grooming shops where I was like, hey, do you need a hand? You know, what can I do to help? And sometimes somebody needs somebody to come over and help them out or help them so that they can get a break or, you know, help the dog calm down. That one, that one comes up a lot too, because I like calming dogs down. You might have guessed that from the podcast, but I like calming dogs down. So <laughs> if I'm seeing someone struggling, I might come over and say, hey, do you mind if I help calm him down? We can help these dogs have a better experience by being in charge of the mood on our table. Now, that even means if someone on the other side of the room is having a bad day, I'm trying to block that mood from the dog on my table. That dog and I are having a different day than what's going on over there. It will affect them. If you think for one minute that dogs don't notice when someone on the other side of the room is having a bad day, <laughs> they notice. <laughs> they definitely notice. Maybe not every dog, but a lot of them are like, whoa, what's going on over there? So we need to think about how we can help the dogs have a good experience. Help the dogs. And... If you are experiencing some compassion fatigue, also try to find something about each dog that you really like. Like reconnect with why you do this. And especially compassion fatigue around the holidays. Now, I don't usually experience it around the holidays because the holidays for me are just about seeing family. I don't feel any big pressure to go off and buy stuff. I don't feel any financial pressure about it. It's just about spending time with people. But the Christmas rush for some people is really, really stressful. And if you are one of those people who's experiencing some compassion fatigue this year, before we go back to work again, spend a little bit of time thinking about why you do it. Think about each individual dog. Like what makes that dog tick? You know, there are very few dogs that I don't connect with, you know, and, and the ones that I might have trouble connecting with, that's really rare, really rare. In fact, I can't think of an example, and I've been doing this for a long time. I can't think of an example of a dog that I can't find a connection with, that I can't find something I like about them. So take a deep breath. Think about what it is you like about this job. Think about something you like about this dog. And think about this dog's experience being very important to their grooming process. Because even if, even if they're a hot mess, <laughs> right? Like their owner totally neglects them. They've been like, you know, they're, they're cruddy, they're matted, whatever it is. That dog especially needs someone to take some extra care. That dog especially, who knows how much care that dog gets, give them a spa day and think about how you can help them feel good and feel safe and feel cared about. Safe and cared about 
I know that's such wishy-washy verbiage, isn't it? <laughs> but that's really what we're trying to do here, isn't it? I want them to feel safe. I want them to feel like somebody cares about them. Even if maybe we're thinking this is a real neglect case. I think we've all seen those. We need to help this dog have a good experience. Because, hopefully, we can convince somebody to take better care of them and bring them in more often. But even if not, even if this is the only time you're ever going to see that dog, we can make that moment better for them. So, final thoughts on this. If you are experiencing compassion fatigue, be aware of that and talk to somebody. Talk to other groomers. Find what makes you happy about grooming. That might be finding some really neat grooming videos and a trim that you want to try and having some fun playing with some new stuff. But think about your own emotions when you are grooming. If you'd like more information, you can find me at Chrissy at happycritters.net, um, happycrittersdogtraining.com, or you can join the Facebook group, Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast, or the Facebook page, Creating Great Grooming Dogs. I really look forward to hearing from you.